Yeah, so. Okay, hello. We are going to cover stack models. So we are going to introduce the concept of stacking, explain how stacking works, discuss the advantages and disadvantages of stacking, and provide example of how stacking have been uh, implemented in HO2. Uh, so, well, the basic idea. Imagine you have a group of individual learners who are trying to solve a problem. Each learner has its own strengths and weakness, and they might not agree on the best solution. How can you combine their opinions to get the most of them? This is the idea behind stacking. So basically, you have two models, and of course, more models in this. Uh, and they have different answers. So it's like it's like extending random forest for more models. It's like that. So you have different models that have different solutions, and you want to know when do you use one prediction or the another one. A stacking is a technique that uses com a combiner to merge the predictions of several individual learners or base learners, that's the way that we call base learners, the combiner is also known as a meta algorithm or super learner because it learns from the other learners and produces a super prediction. In the random forest settings, the super learning will be the mean. So you would take the mean of, of the models, but in this process, you will use another model instead of just a summary metric. This technique was introduced by Leo Brainman in 1996, but it was considered as a black art until 27, 2007, when Van den Bury and Boar developed his theoretical background. They show that stacking can achieve optimal performance when base learning presents high variety and uncorrelated predictions values. So that you, you really want learners and base models that have different predictions. That's the main point. On the certain conditions, and they provide practical guidelines for implementation. So basically, yeah, <laughs> scientific, that's an old method, but it's really new in the implementation. Based of the, it was maybe hard to explain and uh, why is working, but the point is to have a high variability. And I I have been saying that yeah, it's really uh, related to random forest. It's like the same idea but bigger. So this is the environment that we are going to use. So our sample recipe and H two, and I have I'm signing also gigabytes of RAM. We are going to use this data. We are going to, to split it, training and testing. And here, yeah, we need to also load the, ah, uh, here's applying some transformation also. In recipe and also like in H2, you need to have a vector to explain which is the, the, the outcome and the predictors. Like you need to have different data frames. So they use these two variables to split it. So you just have a data frame with predictors and what with the outcome. That's basically the main shape. The main difference. Process description. Set up an ensemble by define a list L of tomb based learners. Defining a meta learner algorithm using some regularized regression or maybe whatever, it doesn't. But regular regression because it performs feature selection. That's basically one important part. Train the ensemble by training each base learner, perform K cross, uh, K, K fold cross validation on each of the base learners 
and collect the cross validated predictions from each of the the from each to avoid overfitting as they would be predicting new data. Creating the zip feature metrics M times L, known as level one, train the meta learners algorithm to the level one by this function. So basically, what you're going to do is to, to use cross validation. So with part of the training data, you will train them the base learner, and then you will use the other part of the data to make predictions. And using the same test data, you will cre create predictions, creating a matrix. So you will have M predictions, that's the, the test data, from the L learner. So you will have a whole table. That's basically the point. You will you will be predicting that variable many times. And you will use that data frame to, to create to fit a function, and that function is the value that you are going to put it. So that's the level one data is that data, that set a data frame. To make predictions, generate a prediction from each learner and fit those predictions into the meta learner to generate an ensemble prediction. That, that is the same function right here. And that's basically, that's the training part. And maybe this is the, the implementation part, but it's the same. It's to take this matrix and then make predictions. So to use a, our a stack model, we have many options in R. We have the stats, a package model, a stacking that was aligned with tidy models, a user like linear model to combine predictors from ensemble models. So you can see in Cram and GitHub, and use the super learner and have and doesn't perform parallelization. We have also super learner. That's the original implementation. And yeah, it doesn't have parallelization. The ensemble, yeah, GitHub only, and yes, yeah, it performs parallelization. Caret ensemble, also there's an old package. And it says here, the algorithm is bootstrap, stacking, and H2. That also integrates auto MLO. Model training process. To train base model using the same SIP for assign a model to save it the cross by predictions. So basically what you need, what they do, okay, if you want to reproduce your result, you need to set a SIP. You need to, uh, for the H2 package, you need to set to model. So what you are trying to do is that every predict Base predictor will have the same test data and the same training data. That's basically the point. And we need also the predictions to create the, the level one data that we told before. That, that's basically the what we are looking for. And here we have the variables, the predictors, our outcome name, our data and all the, the before parameters we talked before. The C, the number of forms. And, and now there are training a random forest based learner. And we explain, we have all these parameters because they already made the job just to, to find the best model to tune this model. So we have a random forest. Oh. It was longer, I thought. <laughs> then we have a gradient boosting machine. 
the same process of, of training. I think they have all that. Uh, they, ah, yeah, and they also use AG Boost, but I cannot use that in my Windows computer, uh, at least with H2, that, that's the point. The H2O doesn't support that algorithm for a Windows computer. You download directly the ngbook package, yes, yeah, you would be able to do it, but not with H2. That's the point of this chapter. But that doesn't affect too much the, the result of, the, of this chapter. So I I, I went ahead with it. And set the assembled model. Once you have trained some model, you need to take each of them into the list. So we have three models already trained. And yeah, we define into this function. Then we can explore the correlations. And yeah, they are highly correlated models. Like the values that predict the general linear model is really similar to the gradient booster or the random forest. So yeah, this is not the best example to use in for this situation. You really want uh different predictions for each model. So the performance of this model was really bad in, the, in that sense. It was just better to, to take the 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 gradient boosting machine. So it's like it's like they, they explain, you know, that you really want to have different predict uh, base predictors. Uh, yeah, they said I was explaining and they create a function to get the RMC and S E. So we apply that to each model and we can get and we can see how how is the per they are performing as we can see the best one is this. And, and you can see the the, the, the start model when I use the same function. Yeah, we have a, a little bit higher, not much higher, you know, but yeah, it was a a, a custom function here. I, I define it here. So H2 performance, model, new data, and just uh, extract the, the metric, that's it. And if we see the radio, how it's going. So yeah, we can see that the, the stack model is much better than the linear model, a little bit better to the random forest, but worse, a little bit worse to the gradient boosting machine. So yeah. There is an alternative uh, way to train this model, and maybe that's the way that uses starts related to tidy models. And maybe it's, it's better to make the tuning process with the, the super learner rather than the doing in an individual process. Rather than using the tune learner, base learner, we could start multiple models from the same base learning and allow the super learner to perform the tuning process. So you, you will have a, a tuning just for this for this prediction. So we can, can agree all parameters using a list. When we define the control parameters, the strategy perform random search for all the combinations. So it's like we we don't even though we have all this search, we don't we are not going to to train a model for each combination. We are going to select a random some random models and we are going to take by random 25. That that's the point of, of this search criteria. Measure performance of each model. So they are using this algorithm. And it is the random grid. 
they arrange the model by performance. And here is the result. So the base mo the best model has this performance. It's a NG model seven. And also we can see here the, the parameters that define that model. Yeah, that's all the points we have here. Um Then we define the, the star ensemble from that grid. And then we compare the two models to the stack model. And yeah, the RMC is a little bit lower. So we have, in this case, a, a better performance because we are using the best model many times and getting the best result of each of them. So here we have a random grid, get model, new data, this one, and the ensemble. And also we can shoot down the edge to it. That's the part using my computer, then the other part is from the book. So now we have a new, a new concept. The name my uh, automated machine learning. In both to performing an automatic search across multiple base learners and then stack the resorting models. So we have commercial products and of course the open source products that we are using right now. So basically the commercial products have a lot of feature engineering already automated. We don't have as much automation with this package. And also the model validation have more, so um, more options maybe. But you, as you can see, there are no much difference between one and other. So H2 has the auto model. So the auto model provides a direction for further analysis. It can explore which models fits better with the data as we use the time to perform another task. It's basically when you have a data set and you already clean it, and you know that that's the data you are going to use, you don't know which is the best model to the data because every data have the, is this an experimental <laughs> science? So you, you need to try the most number of models that you can and basically the automated that's what it does. It will try a lot of models with different uh, parameters. And that takes a lot of time. And we have the mass running time in seconds. It's here we can see the two hours limit that they explain. And we can get the results of the this is the code I used. I would use maybe because I didn't run uh, to get the the first and the and the last row maybe of, of this model. So here because that's the picture that they show. So if we can see the gradient boost. Uh, yeah, is the is the are the one of the most uh, or SG boosts. That's maybe the, the model that we need to use because they are have the lower RMSE. And of course, the same model are below. So it's like, you know, these are really flexible model. If you don't tune uh, the parameters, you won't get a good model. That, that basically the conclusion here. But you know that that's a possibility that you have you have a computer power, you you want to explore more models. This is not, this isn't, this is, shouldn't be your final model. It's just a reference you, you can explore later. That's the way that they explain this chapter. And that's it. Thanks for coming. I don't know if you have comment, questions. We can go back. Hmm.
Okay, so yeah, it's a very, very quick and good explanation for the chapter 15. Yeah, I think there is a kind of a, when I read the, this chapter, it looks like a stand model is a kind of a, kind of a uh, combination of the, all the possible model because uh, each model gonna be the basic learner. And then we just kind of uh, combine those things and then we can try to find a more like a optimal kind of a situation for the best to get to get the best to be jerked. So I think there is a kind of a meta kind, it reminds me about the meta analysis because it's just kind of a, by setting the setting the whole different, uh, try to combining the set of the model we can thinking about to analyzing the data set. And then this stack model is gonna be keep stacking about the, this model and then uh, get the more like uh, optimized outcome by training, not the training the data by itself, we just uh, using the that predictive value from the model. And then based on that, we can get the, some of the result. That's the what this one works. So main difference from the other model gonna be the, in case of the stack model, we actually try to build up the model first to, as a as a unit of the learners, and then uh, we just uh, try to keep combining the possible kind of a machine learning kind of a technique, and then a modeling, and then a predictive outcome, and then uh, the the reason why it actually says about the, in here like a stacked ensemble, like a ENSEM BLE, like ensemble means a kind of a combination of the of the model or maybe predictive prediction from the for prediction, predictive outcome from the from the model as a kind of a learner. And then by combining those, all the possible kind of those predictive outcomes, and then we can try to set up the more optimized kind of value. That's what this one is about. So it's mm -hmm. a kind of a more like a, more like a, Rather than try to focus on the one model, it's about the combination of the, how we can combine, combine some of the model in, inside, the, inside the one integrated approaches and then to get the more, more better predictive outcomes. So that also requires us about the, a lot of a variation of the model at the same time, variation of the, our sampling method to train the model. So depending on the, those two component, two elements of the variations and then how we can get the more like optimized predictive outcomes. So it's a more like a model based kind of a approaches rather than the predictive. So what about, what what do you think, uh, Ricardo? Uh, yes, ju just a couple of points. Um, yeah. When you run H2O, uh, if you want to add the XG boost, uh, algorithm. Uh, the the only platforms that allows that is the is Linux or Mac. Okay, so mm -hmm. uh, it, it was a good uh point that uh Angel made that in Windows, uh, you don't have that that option. Okay, you have the you know the the gradient boosting machine algorithm, which is uh, something that H two O you know customize. Okay. Mm -hmm. But usually XGBoost is a good uh is is a good choice, okay, to to have. And you know, in practice, uh what I do is that for example, I have a, a, a Mac laptop and a Windows laptop, right? So if I'm working on, on Windows, I want to compare if I add the XGBoost on the Mac, running on the Mac, you know, if it uh improves my, my my metrics. And usually it, it does, okay. So take uh, you know. T take that you know in you know in, in consideration yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 but uh you know in windows it won't it won't you know it won't it won't it won't it won't, it won't be available uh and the next thing that i was uh pointing is that uh according to the the you know the the grid search the stacking uh the grid search mm -hmm. uh that metric of uh i think it was 19 something um mm -hmm. okay that's a very good uh, that's a very good one in fact uh when i was running each of the algorithms with the aims uh you know data set 
the lowest that I got was the uh, support vector machines, remember? The support vector regressor. And it was about 21,000. So you got an RMSE of 19,000, which is pretty good. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, I don't know, maybe the sample, you know, it's like. Right, right. So, but, also, so de definitely a stacking uh, helps, okay, to a uh, lower, lower and get uh, more, more accurate predictions. And yeah. don't, don't don't and and and, and don't believe uh, don't don't believe me. Uh, talk to the Kaggle uh, people that have uh win their competitions, and usually the model that it it it, it wins is a stack ensemble a model. It is it's not a one you know model to you know to to uh, to uh to make the predictions. It's a stack yeah, ensemble usually. This this is a, this is a mental job thing to to make the best prediction possible. That's it. Exactly, the, the, exactly. The, the, and, the, the, and, and, and it works pretty, pretty, pretty well because uh, what you're doing is combining uh, the different, uh, you know, the different um, strong points of each of the mm -hmm. algorithms. So the it, it's interesting that the more different the algorithms are, the better chance that your stack ensemble will perform well. If they are very similar, for example, you said, you know, you you said about the gradient boosting and the random forest. If they're very similar, then you know you're not going to get that mm. you know uh, boost in performance. But for example, if you have a a, a linear, a linear uh, or, or logistic regression, depending on regression classification, then you have an XG boost, and then you have a deep learning model. Okay, three mm. different algorithms from three different uh you know uh, uh uh assumptions okay so probably if you combine them uh you will get that stack and some will get uh, a better performance than each of those individuals all right so uh yeah uh, that very good presentation I I really I really follow up and it was very uh very to the point thank you yeah <laughs> great yeah, you know, maybe in this case, as you explained, Ricardo, you have, yes. have a better prediction just yep. because this model is really sensible to the parameters. So in this case, mm -hmm. we really get a, if a no correlated models. Right, right. That, that mm -hmm. may be the point because the, the last part, the before part, you know, the mm -hmm. prediction were really correlated with 90%, you know, it was really high, but in this case, we, we had a really good resort. Exactly. Just using yeah. that model, because it's so flexible. Far, so far, it's that's good. the best result I have seen, you know, so far in this book on the on the AIMS. Okay, that, that's the lowest I have seen so far. You're, I, yes, I think so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great, great. <laughs>